Hey crafty friends, welcome back to the old paper lady. Um, Lori, if you're new here, welcome and thank you for joining us. Hope everybody's doing good today. I'm going to try to uh, continue on covering some of these pages in our altered book. I got this one that I want to get finished here and then I think I'm going to try to... Uh, I'm going to try to finish this off camera is what I'm wanting to do. But it's not very exciting. I don't feel so. I don't want to, you know, keep boring you guys with it, to be honest. <laughs> because, like I said, once I showed, showed you how to do the fold and flaps and, you know, five to eight pages, pull out in between and such and then, you know, you just basically just take your paper and put it to the page and measure what you want to cut. You know, it is kind of a little bit time consuming to, uh, to set and do each page. You have to do each page, uh, pretty much cut the fit type situation. And, um, I'm thinking that may be a little boring to some people. So I hope... Hope we all are okay with me gluing this a page or so in here, and then I'm gonna try to move on. I think I want to do uh, I'm gonna try my best to do a some book page and music page page collage. I can't talk very well. I've been a hole in my tongue in my sleep apparently last night. I was hungry and chewed my about chewed my tongue off. I woke, us, woke up this morning with my tongue hurting and swelled up and I was like what in the world did I do? And I apparently was hungry and chewed on it in my sleep and bit a hole in it. So it's sore. So I um, can't talk good. Which you know I couldn't talk to couldn't talk good anyways, you know, because the words didn't come. So, you know, now it's worse because I can't pronounce half the words that I want to, that I want to say. Because my tongue swelled up and every time I try to say something, I bite it. <laughs> so, you know. Here we are. So then that's going to be a full page pocket. So I covered this one and that one and that one. And then we did this page. And then I put a pocket here in the front. I like that. I think that is going to be cute. So I did go back and print some more of the green and red florals out of that kit. And again, that kit is autumn florals from Girl One Art. And uh, I started to shoot a video and I bit my tongue again and I had to quit. So but that's the parts that I had covered in that half shot video. <laughs> so... But, yeah, so that's what happened there. I was trying to shoot a video and bit my tongue. And that, that wasn't good. So, last night I didn't shoot a video because we had some happenings in our, uh, in our area. There was a fella, um, uh, that was wanted, uh, for a double homicide out of Fayetteville which is Cumberland County in North Carolina. And who knows how or why he was up in our area yesterday wreaking havoc and running people off the road up uh, Willis Gap Mountain here and uh, fled on foot and uh, wound up shooting and uh, killing a canine officer dog and then did the same to himself. So, when uh, I got off of work last night, the woods behind our house was just uh, lit up with uh, police activity, which is not directly behind our house. When I say behind our house, it's on the road at, that runs behind our house, which is like three to four foot law, football field lengths, actually, from our actual yard. So, it, it's a ways, but, you know, you can still hear all of the chitter chatter of the police and and all of that happenings and such so i didn't think it would be be 
a good time to try to make a video with all of that, with all that racket and uh, stuff going on over behind us. So I just took the night off and the police officers did their job and we're still investigating up until the morning time. I don't know when they actually quit. I know uh, we went out to take the dog out and they were, they were still, you could still see lights back over behind us. And uh, still hear a siren every once in a while. Like, you know, like a whoop whoop, you know, like, hey, let me through, I'm trying to get out type situation. And then, uh, let's see, there was coyotes in the yard last night. Freak us out. <laughs> What is that old bunch going on last night? So, you know, the nerves was up. And then it seemed like every time I sat down was wanting to, you know, was thought about maybe possibly starting the video, you would hear a whoop whoop. And I was like, yeah. And I didn't know how much you could hear on the video. So I was like, nah, I'm just going to wait. I'm just, you know, just wait. Let them take care of what they need to take care of. And, you know... It ain't that important to me, for me, to shoot a video at this point in time. So, because you know, all I'm doing is covering these pages in this, in this book. So, hope you were all okay with that. I didn't, that I didn't shoot a video yesterday. I think I'm going to trim the side of that just a wee bit this side and this side so yeah this fella I don't know how he was up here or why wouldn't you know they never said or speculated as to you know how and why he was up in our area after doing what he did down there but but uh, he was uh, driving and running people off the road up here and uh, I, I, I assume it in what was a, they now say is a, was a, a, a high speed chase. So I'm assuming they, they were aware of his whereabouts and, and you know, went in to, to try to get him and he had fled from them is what I assumed had happened. Like I said, it, it wasn't really a whole lot of detail, detail about it. It was just a, they called the house, and they was calling and sending texts out, and, you know, we have, like, a Surrey, Surrey Alerts type thing or what have you, and they were sending all kinds of stuff to my Facebook about that, and with this shelter in place, you know, lock your doors, do not answer the door, blah, 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 and so I called to make sure that Mama knew what was going on, because, you know, she watches the news, but she don't watch no local news. She's, uh, you know, CNN. And that's what she watches. And that, and if it ain't on air, it ain't the news. <laughs> so, yeah. I called her. I said, uh, you do know they got a manhunt over behind the house, right? Yeah, they called the house. <laughs> and I said, okay. <laughs> I was like, well, all right then. I just wanted to make sure you know what was going on over in the woods behind you. Because I was at work. And so I told her, I said, just, you know, go out there and lock the screen door up. And, you know. So then I called Autumn, which is the baby girl. Let her know, you know, what was going on. And she needed to call let her nanny know when she come back. So nanny would come unlock the door and let her in. So, yeah, that was uh, the whole situation yesterday was craziness going on and I said now earlier in the summertime and I don't know if I was shooting videos then or not I don't think I was there was a fella that uh down here at this little uh gas station below us the marathon he had walked up to a fella and asked him for a ride and the fellas told him no he pulled out a gun and shot the fella and killed him right there at the gas station. And I was just like, 
So I was calling frantic, you know, wanting to know, hey, you know, where's everybody at? Where's everybody at? So, yeah. And I said, why in the world are all the crazies acting up on our side of town all of a sudden, you know? I probably should have tried to cover that before I, uh, I think I might just leave that, actually. Let's leave that open. Let's dust it up a little bit and leave that. But, yeah, I was just like, why is all the killer people acting a fool over in our neck of the woods all of a sudden? I may get struck for this video. I don't know, but I was just telling you, you know, about the happenings that happened in our neck of the woods yesterday. So I'm not, uh, I don't know what words I can and can't say pretty much, but anyways, that's what had happened here yesterday. And why I was not able to shoot a video because every time I try to sit down and turn it on, they would be a, like a whoop, 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 or a whoop, whoop, you know, just a, them coming in and out back here or what have you. I don't know what was going on. I just know they had a, a lot of per, uh, police presence in and around back behind us. And uh, I just decided to uh, worry about where the, uh, where the coyote was in my yard. <laughs> so, and so what happened was Autumn went out to take Snoop out. And she comes back in and she goes, Mama, I think there's a dog out here that's hurt. It's making all these crazy growling rackets. And I was like, okay, let me go. She's like, you know, I ain't never heard nothing like it before. So I went out there and it's, and it's going, rawr, rawr, you know, and I'm like, is that a bear? Oh, Lord, is a bear in the backyard, you know? Because, you know, we do have black bears that run wild in our area every once in a while from time to time. And uh, we're like three blocks from Main Street. The last time someone was spotted here was actually on Main Street. <laughs> so, but yeah, so we have uh, black bears that get spotted from time to time. And uh, so she was like, I don't know what this racket is. It sounds like a dog. And I was like, okay, well, let me go. Let me go see. Let me go investigate, you know. So, I go out there, and it's like, you know, like I said, it's making them crazy rackets like I just did. And I was like, I don't know what the heck that is, Autumn. What's, you know? So, uh, we put the phone on uh, night night uh, vision and tried to, you know, snap a picture of it while it was slinking through the yard out here. And I, I was like, it is too big to be a fox, you know, and a fox really don't kind of make them kind of rackets, you know. It, it was sounding like a bigger animal. And, uh, so we took a picture of it, and I was like, yeah, see, the body of it looks way too big to be a fox. So then, <laughs> you know, we got on Google, of course, and, uh, was, you know, and YouTube, and was, uh, pulling up sounds of coats. And it, that sound, that growling racket that it was making, yeah, it was a coat. And I told her, I said, well, let me tell you what. I said, uh, you and the Snoop Dogg don't need to be going outside uh, un unsupervised. I said, maybe all this uh, commotion over here in the woods today has got uh, has got them suckers stirred up and got them out of the, got them out of the, out of the woods. So, uh, now where did I need to cut that at? I marked it. My goodness, woman, pay attention. Did I cut the mark off? I probably did. I guarantee I did. Nope, there it is. All right. So, yeah, we did the Google investigate the sounds, you know, what, what it could sound like. And sure enough, that growling racket was an attack growl. <laughs> you know, because she said, well, I was out there and I heard it. And then she goes, you know, after I heard it, then I heard some go doo, 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 like it was running, you know, in the yard. And, uh, yeah, apparently it was attacking. It had set out to attack them. I'm going to cut this off about halfway here. So, yeah, that happened last night. And then I was like, yeah, we just, uh, 
we just need to just keep our eyes peeled, stay in the house, you know, and uh, just to, so I basically was more worried about, you know, the happenings going on in the area. And like I said, every time I tried to turn the camera on, it, it was a police racket of some sorts or ambulance, you know, whatever. And it, it wasn't, you know, constant sirens. It was the whoop, whoop, you know, every once in a while or the type stuff, you know, and it, me and the sound effects machine here. But, yeah, it was that kind of stuff. And I was like, well, yeah, I can hear it. So I don't know if they could hear it on the camera. So I was like, nah, let's just not even try to worry about it. So that's why I didn't shoot a video yesterday. So then I was like, well, is Jaden coming home if he's coming home tonight? Because, you know, he's staying here for a month or so until they get their apartments fixed and waterproofed and that. And like, so, you know, we need to call him and let him know what's going on. And he was staying at his girlfriend's. He was off yesterday, so he was fine. And then uh, I said, well, okay. So then it was... Uh, up and down till about 3 30. Snoop wanting to run in and out because you know all all the all the commotion going on outside, you know, and he he's wanting to be be the nosy neighbor. <laughs> he's wanting to be the nosy neighbor dog, you know. So he he's up upset upsided, you know, and he's wanting to run and bark and fuss and I was like, dog, just lay down. So yeah. That, that's what he, he decided he wanted to do last night. He decided he wanted to be the nosy neighbor dog and have a full-on commotion fit. I think. And see, and this is what I'm saying about, you know, this is takes a little bit of time, a little bit of patience that sometimes I don't have. <laughs> To be quite, to be quite frankly honest, sometimes I I just don't have it, and I'm just like I'm over it. I want to get it done, uh, move on to something else, you know. But it's gonna be pretty, and I I worry about boring you all with you know with it. So, but so far I think everyone seems to seems to like it. I hope. Now, this was a page that we pulled out, and we, I decided I wanted to have a half pocket page here. And that's what I did, and just folded a, one of the pages that I pulled out of the book itself and uh, stick it onto a solid page. And you can put a tag in it, and it'll be fine. wrong because I want this like this and I want some of the words to show you know just like a little edge barrier that's all like kind of like that and that that's what I was wanting something like that so then I'm going to ink this bit here and glue that down on that straight as I can. Because, you know, normally when we do the pockets, we fold the paper over, but in the altered book situation, I don't want to fold the page over. I want to leave some of the book page sticking out, and that will indicate the pocket. 
and I'm gonna ink it up pretty good before I put it in there so it is a clear def the defined separation. And then when we glue this, we'll do kind of right about the bottom of the page and then we'll glue it down in a U-shape here. So I hope this was helpful for those of you that was asking about um, how to do an altered book or, you know, uh, said that you would be interested in seeing how to do an altered book or seeing an altered book. So I hope I was helpful for you all and not more confusing. <laughs> But it really just all depends on what uh, folds and pockets that you want to make. You know, as the, the actual size of paper that you want to cut. If you want, like I said, I like to do most, pretty much all the way to the edge. You know, and then in some places, like the pocket here where I left the top open that, you know. And then some places like this, I would take and, and put like a half pocket here. Or something probably out of this paper is probably what I'm gonna do because you know that's on the back of that and I want to sturdy that up so then we got plenty of pockets and tuck places and then the ephemera that I want to make I want to take and do like some book page and uh, tags and journal cards and stuff kind of like that is what I'm envisioning but I want to do, it's basically like a tag and pocket, tags, pockets, and journal cards, uh, do like a, uh, yeah, book page and music page, master board, and then just cut it up is kind of what I'm thinking about that I would like to do for the ephemera pieces, in which I've got a few of those. I needed, I want to do a, probably four or five, maybe six, seven, eight of them because I've got a beautiful Christmas kit that would be pretty with that. It's a rustic Christmas kit that would be really pretty. Let's see if we do that. That's going to be too matchy-matchy. What if we just took and did this here? Just did this little corner tuck spot like that and leave the book page. So you don't have to cover the whole book page. I think I would like to do that. I think that would be pretty. Now this you can take and put your thumb pull in it. I just didn't want to because I won't. It has a de defined that hey this is a pocket with a break there with the with the book page sticking up so that's why I was wanting to do leave that uh, heavily inked so then we'll do this here and then that will be a corner pocket there good idea y'all good idea y'all Now on our uh, book page, uh, ephemera that I wanna make for the master boards and stuff like that, we can take and add accents of our floral bits on it. So I would take, you know, after I got done covering the pages and pockets in here, I am going to take and make some uh, tags and journal cards with this and back it on uh, coffee dye or ink dye paper. And then uh, the, um, the actual book page ephemera I want to do it on coffee dye or ink dye paper as well. And then we can take these 
and has some accents of this in with the coffee dye music master board. I know I'm not making much sense. <laughs> so basically what I would do is I would take and do a, uh, do a couple things. Like I would do a book page, music sheet, book page, music sheet, and then maybe put this kind of in the middle somehow or another. This here, I think I want to do this yellow here, and this piece right here is going to be a partial piece in of itself, and then do another strip of the yellow over here, and then have this broken up with maybe some, you know a lighter piece. I think that would be pretty. All right, so I'm going to ink this here before I do anything to it. That's going to be my pocket. I'm going to glue that down. But yeah, like I said, I've seen several people do them different ways. Now, they have done... You know, just the uh, actual went through and did the uh, the book pages and glued the pockets and such down, and then just went back. You know, if it wherever they felt like they wanted to, took and uh, did a, a cover over the book page. And some people have left the actual book page and came through and made ephemera bits with it. I mean, it's just all all on what you want to do, honey whatever your heart desires that you want to do. Now, is that going to be too much? I actually think that would be pretty there. So, I think I'm just going to put this here. Let me get my pencil back. Why do I keep putting you up for? I don't know. Knuckle-headed. Alright, so we'll turn this over and we'll mark this and cut this too. While we're cutting. So yeah, we had a whole bunch of excitement in our area yesterday. And then, uh, now where did I mark you at? Good gracious woman. I know I just marked this. Did I lay it the wrong way and lose the mark? What is wrong with you? <laughs> yeah, I'm fussing at myself. I'm like, what is wrong with you, knucklehead? Right there it is. I probably shouldn't have shot a video today because I ain't got no sense. It seems like. All in little scraps. We'll use that in with our, uh, with our, uh, master board. I love making them things. They're so fun. But I think sometimes I feel like, you know, that it's going to be boring. You know what I'm saying? But it's part of the process. I mean, it really is. It's part of the, uh, and I think I just, no, I didn't. I started saying, I think I cut my mark off on that end, too. But yeah, like uh, making, I love to make the master boards and then uh, cut them up and make tags and pockets and such out of them. Most of the time I like making tags and journal cards out of them because usually by that point, you know, I've already got my pocket situation handled and I'm, I'm needing to just, you know, get the scraps used up, get them glued down and mainly the main thing is why I do a master board. And then uh, when I go through and I see, you know, oh, well, I've got a big old tuck spot here. And I, I need a, I uh, got a belly bin here that I need a big journal card for. So, hey, I got the master board made. Let's use it. And that's usually 
what happens. That's usually what I do with them. I'm going to try to scooch this as close as I can to the edge without covering it up. Because this acting like it don't want to glue down here in the rolled part of the book in the middle. Now at the front and the end, it's not that bad. But in the middle section, that roll in the, in the spine right there. It's not wanting to catch the glue that well, so we're just going to scooch it out a little bit. No big deal. And y'all, my tongue really hurts where I bit it. I tell you what, I don't know. If, apparently, I was eating something really good in my sleep, or I was just talking so much mess, I bit my own tongue. I don't know what it is. And then I was like, well, I wonder if I had a seizure in my sleep. You know, you, you, the... The uh, yeah, Dr. Google again. <laughs> yeah, well, what would cause you to bite a hole in your tongue in your sleep? Uh, probably because you ain't got you ain't got no sense, that's what. <laughs> and now I'm real bad to grit my teeth in my sleep, and uh, yeah, so I, I had braces growing up and I popped. Popped a few braces off off my back teeth just by gritting and grinding my teeth in my sleep. Like I have lock jaw in my sleep. I don't understand it. I think that would be prettier that way. <coughs> but, yep, yeah, that's what happened. And then I swanny. Every time I try to say a word, it has an S or a T in it. It's like I bite it. And it, it hurts plumb up in my jaw. But I've got some of that, um, it's an Oral-B mouth rinse. I use it quite a bit because I do have uh, some dental issues in the back of my mouth where I had uh, wisdom teeth cut out when I was 18. Oh, well, actually 17. No, it was 16. It was before I even got my license, matter of fact. Because... Uh, Well, actually, it was right after I got my license. It was the month after I got my license. It was in, I spent the, after Thanksgiving break, getting my uh, wisdom teeth cut out. It was a hot mess. Looked like a chipmunk for three weeks. And then now, uh, come to find out, they didn't get all of my wisdom teeth. They actually broke them off because they were growing like, underneath my ear and my jaw where it hinges straight out and it was pushing all my other teeth together so I had to have those cut out fairly early so then you know with that mess so now I have uh, bones that kind of work themselves through my gums every time every once in a while and will cause me an issue so I have that mouthwash stuff to keep when that comes about to keep my uh, keep my mouth from being sore, or trying to uh, have an abscess because of that situation. I tell you what, if I just sit and list all the health issues that I have, I bet you I could get disability if I really tried. <laughs> I feel like I'm falling apart all the time, which now. The one doctor is like, you know, with your back and your arthritis. And now with the COPD diagnosis of the conic bronchitis, they're talking about maybe you need to try to uh, slow it down a little bit at work and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> whatever. I'm like, all right, buddy, I'll see you next year. <laughs> He's like, what do you mean? I said, well, you know, when the seasons change next year, I'll have pneumonia again. I'll see you next year. Bye. Because it, it does it every year. It has since I, I, since I can remember. I mean, since I, I was little. I've, every time the seasons change, I get pneumonia. Like, if it goes to springtime, I get pneumonia. If it goes to uh, wintertime, I get pneumonia. The first day that it um, the temperature falls to 50, I get pneumonia. I mean, I'm serious about that. Like, as soon as it hits 50 degrees, boom, I got pneumonia. 
and then I'm fine for the rest of the season after that. I mean, you know, I might have a case of the sniffles or something every once in a while, but as far as the major sickness, I'm good to go. And then, uh, <clears throat> like I said, you know, I do have a cough, clear your throat kind of cough and stuff, but I do smoke cigarettes, so that is a little bit from that. But, you know, the first thing they said was because I smoked cigarettes. I was like, well, this happened, you know, this happened before I was smoking cigarettes, so... Well, yeah, I, I was getting pneumonia way back when I was little in school. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I had pneumonia when I was two years old and had to spend two weeks in the hospital in some kind of incubation tent. And that's how come I have a scar on my right lung because of that situation. And that's how come I get pleurisy every time. Which is fluid on your lungs. And we are at the halfway point, y'all. Look, this is the halfway point. Yay. All right, so what do we want to do on these pages? Because they don't have, you know, this is pocket over here. These are. But these would just be plain Jane covered up pages. So what do y'all want to do? I want to put a pocket here and a pocket there. That's what I want to do. Let's see if we can't do that. Let's cut this in half and see if we can't do this and that with it. Do I want to do it on this side or that side? I think I want to do it on this side. All right, let's see. Where's my cutter do? I might have to use my big cutter for this one. Let me get it over here. See if we can't get us an angled up cut on here and get it, get it somewhat right. Who knows? Probably not. So basically all I'm doing is lining the corner corner up from one end to the other and I'm just gonna cut on a diagonal here and see what we get. See like such. Hmm. So I need to cut a little bit off of here. off at the top I do believe there we go we'll do that one on that one and I would like to do let's see if this would work over here will it work on this Oh, yes, it will. Hush up, y'all. It sure will. Look at that. them while I'm looking at it. All these little angles and corner bits and bobs I'm just going to put over here. And we'll use them. Use it up later. And I think I need to cut just a smidge off of it. This is one of those, uh, it takes forever, but it's going to be pretty. Oh, well, that was awesome. I just threw my pencil pulled over yonder. Oh, well, that's, that is definitely not cut straight. <laughs> All right. Let's see if we can't fix that up a little bit there, buddy. Oh, 
goodness gracious, it still ain't nowhere near straight. How are you such angled up? My goodness. Probably as about as good as we're going to get. No, it ain't. Let me still cut a little bit more off of you. Because you are still way, way crooked. I mean, I know we're cutting at it for an angle, but, or a triangle cut, but it is like super duper crooked at the bottom. There we go. We got that one there fixed. So that one there is fixed. I gotta get my a pencil. I done throwed it over yonder somewhere. That's the old lady grunt of bending over. <laughs> I can't get it. That's funny. The old lady. So then, all right. Well, I ain't done over here. I'm still working ahead, getting ahead of myself. I'm wishing I had looked at that before I cut this piece, cause it would have been perfect to do that one with. So see what I'm doing is we're gonna do this right here with it. I was trying my best to get that bottom piece about as straight as I could get it. I'm probably going to need to cut a little bit more. Because I do want to leave the book page bits on this. Like so. And I think, I think that will work. I think that will work. Okay. So now, let's flip this back over. Get this pocket put on here. Alrighty. And then when I cut the angle for this piece here, I'll use it for the pocket on this page. y'all see that it moved that bottom end moved on me when I went to smooth it down that's irritating I mean I like that I have a little bit of wiggle room with the glue but then when I go to smooth it down and it moves on me and then it's stuck you know that that's annoying a wee bit annoying okay so we got that one so let's work on this piece right here let's get these flippy flaps glued down just filled it up. That means we must be doing a whole lot of crafting, y'all. Having to fill the glue bottle up again. Okay, so I kind of want this like that. I think I need to actually cut this here off, don't I? Yeah, I need to cut that bit off on the edge over here is what I need to cut. And cut about right there. And I think I need to do just a sliver bit down here like that. 
see a lot of it is you know cutting and looking cutting and looking trial and error oh yeah I like that all right so let's ink this up first I'm not quite sure. I'm probably going to put a lighter color underneath. Oh, yeah, that would be greatly pretty right there. Yep. I think that is that going to be in the middle now. Put some glue on it and put it on there before you change your mind and cut something that you don't need to cut and then have to recut another piece. That's usually what happens. I'm like, no, I need to cut it right here and then wind up cutting it wrong. And then I have to cut a whole new piece of paper. <laughs> okay, so I want to get the points fairly straight and in the somewhat center of that. There we go. Well, that turned out pretty good, didn't it? I like it. Okay. So then Let's figure out what we want to put underneath the top piece here. I'm thinking I want to do this yellow, but I don't think I got a strip big enough to do that with. And I don't think I do. Let's see, how wide are you? You should not wide enough. Darn. Fine. Fine, fine, fine. See? Is that going to be pretty? I think so. Let's use you, buddy. Let's see, I got to cut it. Wow, down to there, really? That's pretty much like the whole page. Okay. I just went and got my pencil. Well, what did I do with it? see that. Cannot see it. Well. Did I even write on it? Heck no. <laughs> well, I didn't even write on that paper. What the heck? Okay, there we go.
know what I did? I'm an idiot. I'll see, look. Is that going to cover that? Yep, that'll cover that. Because what I was supposed to have done was cut this part out and then, you know, yeah. I don't know what I was doing. All right, will that cover that part? Nope. But will, this piece could be used to cover that, I think. We'll cover this underneath side over here with it. I don't even know what I was doing. I have no clue. Because what I was supposed to have done was tuck and cut this part out of that piece of paper and stuck it back in there and did not do that. Did not do that. Okay. So I'm going to do that with it right there. And that'll cover the side pieces. Yep. And then this one will go over here under this. Yep. Okay. Now let's ink this again pretty good. No sense how I drew all over it with pencil. <laughs> all right. So, yeah. So, now I'm wondering, do I want to put another piece of that brown there and have that matchy-matchy in the middle, which I think I do. You know, me and Matchy Matchy. It, it just, it's gotta be, it's gotta happen. Little Matchy Matchy. so I don't glue on it. I'm going to glue here and here. <coughs> and try my best to eyeball right down the middle of this. And then we're going to fold these together. We'll flip it back this way and do it again. And then that will be our pocket here and here. And that actually came together fairly, fairly good there. Okay. Alrighty. So then that way we'll take and get our little piece of yarn thread. I'm going to run it down the middle of that like that to indicate the two pockets. So this is just, you know, decorating the pocket bits and that. Have not did a whole bunch of uh, lacy bits per se on any of the pages as of yet. I can't even hold the scissors right today. What is it? Oh, goodness. works just as good as Fabri-Tac on this stuff. Actually, it probably works better than Fabri-Tac, to be quite frankly honest, in this situation. But 
keep the ends from fraying. There we go. And this trims, I got it in one of those, uh, you know how like you go to Michael's or Hobby Lobby and they have the, um, the trim lace bundles that that's what it came out of it was a uh just a dark a dark it was in with a dark group it had like all the brand, the neutrals it was a neutrally bundle okay so i'm glad that we got to do that because i did one of these pocket situations like this off camera so I was like, well, I want to do at least one of those on camera. Oh, I think that is going to be so pretty, y'all. I don't like it a lot. So, and I need this to fold back this way. I'm going to come over here and do a little bit of inking on this page just you know to mess it up a little bit grunge it out a little now you can do the inking you do not have to do the inking if you do not wish to that is completely up to you and what you would like for your book to look like there and it didn't want to stay so now it's wanting to have a fit to fold it back and forth so sometimes you'll have to work your pages you know just like in any regular journal you'll have to work your pages back and forth a little bit now all of this here is freshly glued so that's why sometimes I like to wait to go back after it's dried and go through and ink all the pages just so I don't have the the ink and glue situation and like I said you know some people will take and just do the the word parts of it and leave the book page as the uh as the border and that is really pretty as well just do a little dusting over it you know to knock some of the whiteness off of it and I think that is where we started at okay so now I don't have the pocket piece that I wanted for this page, or do I? I'm going to use that. I don't care. I'm going to do it. I'm just going to continue this angle here. That's what I'm going to do. And we'll put that down right there. And I think that will be the last little bit that I do of this on camera. So we did half of the book on camera. And this will be a project for me while I'm sitting here watching movies. You know, like I've uh, just sitting and uh, watching movies or what have you. Watching other YouTubers while I'm waiting for my video to upload. <laughs> and that's how uh, sometimes that's how I get get some of my projects done a little quicker some days I'm just and you know, most of the time Saturday and Sunday is like I'll have those days set aside for printing and cutting projects you know because I'll have the printer going and, and, the, and the, the die cutter the brother scan and cut going so I'll print and cut, print and cut, print and cut. And uh, most of the time, the printer outruns the cutter. 
So I'll print everything that I want for that for that session. And right now I'm caught up with what I need to work on for a little bit. Or actually what I thought I was gonna do for uh for Christmas. I didn't want to print and get too much stuff ahead, but now, you know, I still got a lot of stuff that I bought on Etsy that I just need to set down and just go through and print it out. Whether I cut it out or not, I need to go through and print it out. And I'm just going to do that right there with that. Yep. I should have did this on this here too, but that's okay. And then we have, you know, pocket tucks here and there. You can put your little tag or follow that piece of paper or journal card in there. So now that is halfway through our book. And uh, I think if we were to finish up and do all of our folds and tuck spots and fill it up with ephemera, it's going to be, you know, kind of gatory mouth. Just a little bit, you know. But see what I'm saying about the pages are wanting the, the first couple ones where I went way down in the spine, the pages are wanting to stand straight up. Oh, let's see, that's the one I did off camera. I wanted to make sure I showed you all how to do that. And the, the layered ones, how you do those. Yeah, so I think that was a sample of all of the layered bits, how to get your paper in it, and you don't have to cover the whole piece, you know, and glue your glue your pockets and stuff down, and, you know, how you get your paper in there and stuff. Now, you can take and glue, because I have seen ladies take and glue their pockets and then go back and just take bits of paper and just cover the book page part and cut that and glue it in. Yeah, you can do that as well, but it's a little easier to cover, uh, get your pocket part fixed first, cover it, and then see where you need your paper to go to on the underside and just cover that portion. To me, I find it a little easier because then I don't have to make so many different cuts on every single page, which, you know, well, it's going to be fun, y'all. I like it. These first pages here are a little stiff. Like I said, because we ran it plumb down into the spine. Now see, like this page is a full page. You can put a pocket on it, a foot page, and make it a tote later on if you'd like. So, all right, well, that's a little bit, if you look down at it, that's a little bit more than half. Yeah, so, but I was saying that that was going to be like our halfway point, and I think it's a little bit more than halfway. Yeah, halfway was actually about three pages ago. Yeah, that's the halfway point right there. The true halfway point of the book. You see what I'm saying? So, yeah, we're more than halfway done with it. That's awesome. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine, ten, eleven ish more pages to, to cut and cover. So not too bad. All right. So, like I said, I'm going to try to do the rest of that off camera. So I don't want to bore bore everybody to death with, you know, the same thing. Oh, here she is covering this daggum book again. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> but I did want to give a sample of, you know, each tuck spot that I did, just in case you followed along with the uh, initial folding and doing the pocket situation for your book. I just wanted to give an example of how to cover your pockets and glue them down and cover the under portion of your pocket that's going to be sticking up that would be book page so that is how you would do it and like i said you can take and go through and glue all of your folds and flips and flops you can glue all of that 
and then go back with your decorative paper and try to cover it. But that's a little more difficult if you do it that way. I, I feel, it, to me, it, it's a little more difficult to do it that way. So I'm gonna put all these strips and pieces in here. Because I think tomorrow I will do some uh, book page and music page collage bits. I would like to do that tomorrow. Let's see. Do I want all the loose bits in there? No, let's put them in a bag. Let's put them in a bag. And I almost messed up and wore my, my rings and my bracelet. I try my best not to wear my jewelry in here because, you know, you got fabric tack and glue and, you know, and I'm, you know, it gets all over you anyways. And good Lord, I don't want to try to clean a ring or nothing like that with the fabric tack all in it. But I do have a few bracelets that I wear uh, quite a bit. Some are not. Some used to be every day, but I don't know. I try to take them off before I get on here. Because most of the time when I get home from work, I take off, I change my clothes, put my night clothes on, take, take me a quick shower, stay on, eat, and then uh, yeah, when I change my clothes. When I get undressed and change my clothes, I undress with my jewels too, is what I'm saying. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to put this project to the side for a little bit. And it's going to be a work on, you know, my own time, what have you. And when I get tired of Christmas, I'll pull it out. And that's what we'll do with it. So it may be uh, when I do a journal of Christmas or uh, a folio or something, and I'm like, all right, I'm tired of looking at Christmas for a minute. I want to pull this back out and let's work on this. So... But now you all, if you did your book and you went ahead and did your folds and such, you you have at it, honey. Y'all go ahead and work on your project and get it done. Send me pictures, post them. I have a uh, I have a uh, what is that thing called? Instagram. <laughs> Sorry, because I'm not you know so called tech savvy. I don't know all the terms for all these things, but uh, I do have an Instagram. And uh, I do need to be more active over there and uh, post and share things. But I will please welcome you to please go over there and uh, follow and uh, interact among yourselves. Because I know, I don't know about comments on on uh, on um, YouTube videos or not. But I know there you can have a place where you can share your photos the projects or what have you, if you're working on the same uh, paper pack projects or journal bits and stuff like that or what have you, or just if whatever you're working on, I would love to see what you all are crafting on. You know, if, just please share with us. and We want to see it, honey. We want to see it and celebrate it. So I'm going to leave this off to the side here behind me on my, on my little carts. So when I get uh, tired of looking at Christmas bits, I'll pull this out and work on this maybe a day or so in between doing Christmas stuff. So, yeah, even though it's fall, you know, it's still pretty colors. Who cares? <laughs> so, so that's that's what I'm going to intend on doing with that bit. So, uh, I think I'm going to get off here because YouTube doesn't like it if it's longer than an hour. And it takes me three hours to upload it. All right, you all. So, I got to get these cut apart. So, that that's going to be our next bit. All right. Thanks so much, you all. And I greatly appreciate the uh, new subscribers, the new uh, support, and the long-time subscribers and support from you all. Thank you so much. Um, let's see. Miss Pam, Miss Betty, Miss Maggie, and uh, Miss Karen. She's a new lady. Thank you so much. And I hope I was helpful with your uh with your altar book honey i hope i didn't confuse you too much and then uh thank you all so much and uh y'all have a good day and we'll talk at you tomorrow